front. Joshua, you could be the timekeeper, you gotta remind me, and this bonkers leg, you gotta remind me that I've gotta switch it off after every half hour. Okay, Okay, right, going, 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 gone. Okay, right, so it's the 15th of July and it's grade 12, choice 2, and it's the first half hour. Okay, so carrying on from where we left off yesterday, we were talking about fossils as being evidence. So remember that the whole critical thing here is that we're talking about different fields of evidence for evolution. And the first field of evidence is fossil evidence. And fossils you get in grade 10, and so we're just quickly revising fossils here. And we spoke about the fact that fossils are remains of organisms that existed. Um, we spoke about the principle of superposition. Matthew, I hope you um, watched yesterday's lesson. No, because it's not yet on. So basically, if you're looking at strata of rock, these are the older strata, and these would be the newer. And so fossils that are down in the older strata of rock are obviously older than the fossils in that stratum, and the fossils in this one are older than that, the ones in that, etc., etc. And this is the principle of superposition. And basically it goes that going back in time, no, that way, going backwards in time, levels will be reached. We know fossils of flowering plants are present. And then no birds, and then no mammals, and then no reptiles, and then no four-footed vertebrates, no land plants, no fish, no shoals, no animals, etc. Okay, so there are three basic concepts in the study of fossil evidence that are important when considering it as um, evidence for evolution. And the first one is that fossils represent the remains of once living organisms. That's critical. If they didn't, then it would be absolutely no use using it as evidence. Most fossils are the remains of extinct organisms. So they belong to species that are no longer living anywhere on Earth. And then the kinds of fossils found in rocks of different ages differ because life on Earth has changed through time. And this is a critical, critical one. But you can't get this one unless those two exist. So you've got to agree to that, you've got to agree to that, and then this is the whole critical one. Okay. This is something that is quite um, similar in some ways to the cladogram that we looked at yesterday, and it basically goes, these are the geological time periods. So if you go back in time, to the furthest to go, it was the Cambrian, then it was the Ordovician, then the Silurian, then the Devonian, and this is the most recent. Okay, and if you look at the groups of organisms that are here, both animals and plants, and you look at the groups of, of organisms, what you can tell by these lines is when did they first evolve? So if I said to you, when did animals with shells evolve? You would look here and you would say at the beginning of the Cambrian period. When did fish evolve? Towards the end of the Cambrian period. So within about the last third of the Cambrian period. Um, are fish extant? In other words, do they still exist? Yes, they do, because their line goes up to the top here, and I think that turns around and then they break. Okay. Why are you guys late? What? You're late. I'm 10 minutes into the lesson. They just let us out, man. Yeah, well, you must tell me to get you out earlier. You've got the bitch from hell. <laughs> and they're lost. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, sorry guys to waste your time, but I have to go back because these guys were in here. Oh. It's Dorothy. What? It's Dorothy. Yes. What did you call it? Josh. 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 Yeah. Okay, come, sit, go. Put your blankets around. Yeah, Matthew. He's going to want to go there. Faster than that, Matthew. <laughs> Going any slower, you'd be going backwards. Sanitize your hand. <laughs> no, I don't want to know. You have to, or you had to? I had to. No, that's one day. Oh, no, I don't care. Everyone else will be so late. Let's wait until you invite me to your wedding and I arrive 15 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, sorry that we were doing this, guys, but it's for the late kids. Okay, so yesterday we got as far as we spoke about the principle of superposition. And remember that that means that the strata of rock are laid down from the oldest to the newest. Okay. And therefore, fossils that are in a low-line stratum are older than fossils in a stratum through that. And so you would be able to sequence the fossils going from the bottom upwards. Okay, all right, we spoke about the index fossil yesterday. And so continuing backwards in time, in other words, going down through the strata, you would eventually reach a stratum where there are no fossils of flowering plants. Okay, because they haven't evolved yet. Then a stratum where there are no birds, then a stratum where there are no mammals, no reptiles, no four-footed vertebrates, then no land plant, then no fish, then no shell, and then no animals at all. Okay, all right. There are three basic concepts. And remember, we're going through the pieces of evidence for evolution, the fields in which the experts who have given the evidence for evolution and the first one is fossil evidence. But in order for fossils to be used as evidence that evolution occurred, there are three important concepts that have to be agreed to. And the first one is that fossils represent the remains of once living organisms. If they didn't, they're useless. Secondly, most fossils are the remains of extinct organisms. And remember that the opposite of extinct is extant. So that is, they belong to species that are no longer living anywhere on Earth. Okay. Once you agree to those two, this is the critical one. The kinds of fossils found in rocks of different ages differ because life on Earth has changed through time. Okay. In other words, evolution occurred. Does that make sense? So a really, really important, but you can't get to this one unless you agree to those two. Unless there's evidence that those two are true. Okay, happy, happy. Please, Mrs. Blaze, you can Okay. And I was busy explaining this type of diagram. Now, you will never be asked to learn these diagrams, but you have to be able to interpret them. And they can give them to you in lots of different forms. You have to be able to interpret them. And if you look at this one, this one's pretty easy. What it's got is groups of animals and groups of plants. And these are the geological periods from Cambrian, was the first, then Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, etc., etc., of for these particular organisms. There were possibly ones that existed before here for other organisms that are less involved than these ones, but we're not concerned with them because this particular diagram only shows for these groups of organisms. And so this is a timeline. And so what you can see here is when did the first organisms in those groups evolve. And you can also see 
are there school organisms within that group that are extinct? Now there might be some that are extinct, for example, here's birds, and it tells you that they still exist at the current period, they still exist, but you know that the dodo is extinct. So within birds, there are some extinct organisms, but the group as a whole has got extinct examples. Okay, are you happy with that? So they could give you this and they could say to you, um, name the group of organisms or the two groups of organisms that evolved in the last third of the Devonian period. So then you go to Devonian and you take Rula and you go, mm, amphibians? Mm -mm. No, not horsetail rushes, because that was probably in the last half, but check it out, ferns. Okay, so ferns and amphibians. Do all of them still have extant um, examples? The whole lot. Okay. Which group of organisms evolved most recently? Humans. All right. You just have to interpret. And these, this is marks for Jan. Because they're all so easy. Okay, you're right with these. Okay, tap it. All right. So, um, finding fossils, natural processes such as erosion or mountain formation can expose deeper rock layers, and therefore some fossils that might be very, very old could be brought up to the surface because of folding of rock strata when mountains are formed. We've spoken about relative dating, okay, we spoke about that last time, and then there's um, a far more accurate method of dating that is quite commonly used. It's called radiometric dating. Who doesn't do science? Okay, but I understand this. And tell me, trust me, I did so badly at science at school, so not that I learned, but okay. So radiometric dating enables absolute age to be determined. And what it does is it measures the amount of radioactive decay that is taking place. Now, you don't have to understand the principle behind this. You just have to know that it's a method and it's much more accurate. But for the sciencey people, it goes, some atoms are unstable and they decay, forming a different type of atom at a steady rate. Okay. Rate is measured in what is called half-lives. And that is the length of time required for half of the parent atom to decay into a daughter atom. Okay, so it goes like this. When you start off life with this kind of rock, when it was first formed, it had uranium in it. Now uranium is unstable and it decays into lead. At a known period of time, its half-life is known to be one billion years. So then if you take a rock and it's got an equal number of uranium and lead, lead atoms, what do you know? You know it's a billion years old. Okay. And then within another half-life, half of the existing uranium here have changed to lead, etc., etc. So you can just work backwards from this. You can go, if you pick up a fossil and its proportion of uranium to lead is whatever, whatever, then you can work out how old it is. Okay. And you don't have to understand the principle, but it just, that's the principle. Okay. And it's really, it's not complicated. It's actually, I understand it. Okay. All right. So, model, modern dating techniques involving radioactive decay of uranium and of potassium and of carbon have been able to establish a fossil record extending back almost 1,700 million years. So, that's quite a long time. Even I know that. Okay, blah, 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 blah. So, relative dating, if you're comparing, and guys, please remember, and I've told you this before. Remember there was a table in paper two last year. He asked for a table of comparison. And the kids did it exceptionally badly. And therefore, I think you've got a pretty good chance of getting a table of comparison. Okay.
Okay, so it goes. You always have to give a healing. Okay, the healing in fact would be outside the table. Okay, so you put a healing. And remember that the healing um, has to describe exactly what is in the table. So last year, out of the six marks for the table, two marks were for the healing. The one was, was there a heading? And the second one was, was the heading complete? Did it describe exactly what is in the table? And this is actually a poo heading. Okay, because while it does compare relative and absolute datum of fossils, it's not saying what aspects are, what aspects are being compared. Is it comparing size? Is it comparing whatever? So it's comparing um, the scope, in other words, what can they determine, um, and how it's performed, and the disadvantages. So the heading should actually include all that information, comparing the scope, the method, and the drawbacks of relative and absolute data of fossils. Okay, you need to give a complete heading. And so that just describes how it's done, and I've told you that, and I've told you that. And this one is quite nifty because it's relatively cheap to do. Okay, because a person who knows will just go, oh, it's in the same stratum as a trilobite, and therefore it's got to belong to whatever, whatever. So that's quite cheap because you've just asked some expert. This one requires work in the lab. And any work that is ever done in the lab is pretty expensive. And it takes a bit of time to do it. Okay, might take like a month to get the results back or something. And so those are some drawbacks there. Okay, so what has been established? That the Earth is approximately 4.6 billion years old. And that has been determined by looking at the radioactive decay of uranium to lead in rocks. Okay, well, what are the earliest life forms? Anaerobic bacteria. Do you remember that anaerobic means without oxygen? Okay, so it's certain bacteria that was able to survive in the absence of oxygen. And remember you learned last year that bacteria are unicellular, and you learned that they're prokaryotic, in other words, they don't have a true nucleus. Okay, they don't have membrane-bound organelles, and so the DNA from the nucleus is just loose in the cytoplasm. And they don't have mitochondria, and they don't have chloroplasts, and I don't think I've ever seen so many blank faces in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I've talked for 44 years, and trust me, I've seen blank faces of note. You okay? Mm -hmm. Don't obsess with me, Evans. Okay. And it appears that, that they appeared on Earth about 3.5 to 3.9 billion years ago. Now, how could you abbreviate billion years ago? Mm -hmm. Y A. But remember the first time you abbreviate anything? You give the whole thing, and in brackets you give the abbreviation, then you can use the abbreviation after that. Okay, so this is just an example of a fossil, and this is a very, very famous bird, and we'll get back to it eventually. So what does the fossil record indicate? There's an increase in complexity of organisms. So from the lowest down, all the strata, going upwards to the top, there are more organisms, and they're far more complicated. So these little simple bacteria versus um, a humpback whale. Okay, so far more complex. Okay, all right. There's an increase in diversity. In other words, the different kinds of organisms far more, more recently than they used to be. Okay, and the further back you go in time, the more extinct species there are, which is sort of logical. Because if you started in the year um, a thousand and you looked how many dead people there were, you can't think, I don't know, a million. And you look how many dead people there are now, you counted them. You've got this whole extra period of time where everybody died. Well, not everybody. 
Okay, so the more extinct species grew back in time. Right. And then you've got these amazing things called translational fossils, and they're absolutely incredible. These are what you might refer to as missing links, but if you call them missing links, I will beat you. Okay, you're going to call them this beautiful line in there, transitional fossils. And these are intermediate forms between groups, and they exist. Okay, this was one of the biggest arguments at the time when Darwin published his book on the origin of species. People were going, where's the evidence? If you're saying this organism evolved into that organism, we want evidence of the in-between thing, because this organism, that organism are so different from each other. We want to see evidence here. And Darwin said there is evidence out there, he just didn't have any. Okay. And shortly after he um, published his book, people started finding transitional fossils. Okay, so what does it show? All species evolved from a simple common ancestor. That common ancestor of the bacteria types down here, all organisms evolved from those. And that simple common ancestor evolved into a large number of different species because of accumulated genetic changes. And Darwin called this descent with modification. Critical terminology, descent with modification. Okay, which basically is evolution. the simple common ancestor evolving to a large number of species. And that's basically the same thing as the radiation. Remember the last, we spoke about it yesterday? Okay. Adaptation. Okay. I'm going to show you two different diagrams now, different kind of diagram. They're called kite diagrams. You don't have to learn them, but you have to know how to interpret them. So all of these, these phylogenetic trees, cladograms, kite diagrams, and whatever, just know how to interpret them. Don't learn them. Okay. So there we've got one. And this particular one is about the diversification of life. Okay. In other words, how diverse are all these groups and when did they evolve? Now again, here... You've got the, the um, these are eras. Okay, I think they're eras. And these are periods. Okay, so Cambrian to whatever. And then these figures are the actual millions of years before the present, which is exactly the same as millions of years ago which you were allowed to abbreviate after you've written it in my name. Go ahead, Matt. No, so the ear is the, the areas, like you know, the same Ears are long. Yeah. Periods are shorter. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? No, no, it's, 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 um, it's a measurement of time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to learn? No. No, 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 no. I said to you, don't learn these things. Okay. Yeah, fluck me. No, no, I just meant like okay. periods and the... Oh, no. No, life is too short. Okay. okay. As long as you can interpret this, and you can work out, and, and I can say name one period of time that is older than the Ordovician. You can say Cambrian, because it was Ordovician. Okay, right, you happy? Now, yeah. what is this... Hmm? Oh, sorry. Can you just give one more question? I'm just not sure if I'm trying to answer the word now. So, say again. So, are there like spots for the? I'll go through that. Okay. Okay. Because this is a little bit different to the other one. There are some similarities, but there are lots of differences. So this would show you when did the things evolve. So if I say to you, when did monocotyledonous plants evolve? You would take a ruler and you would go across here 
and you could work out when monocotyledonous plants evolved by looking at these two figures. So if it was absolute midway in the Cretaceous, between 142 million years ago and 65 million years ago, you would do a little calculation with the calculator and you would go blah blah million years ago. Because remember in BioBlock always marks when units are measured. And you don't put the units of measurement, sometimes you lose the entire thing. Because if I say to you, when did they evolve, and you say, I don't know, whatever this figure is, 75, whatever, but you don't put units of measurement. I don't know whether you mean 75 years ago, or 75,000 years ago, or whatever. You've got to get units of measurement. Okay, I'm going to do that. We'll be back. Uh, first half an hour, we talk to C15 July and